expecting too many people to jump in here to <clears throat> i was watching some youtube videos yeah man i have been spending i have spent the whole day um rearranging this rc room and i have way more room as you can see look at the room i have room guys um <clears throat> yeah it's um it's coming out pretty nicely man um i ended up getting the saber hung up uh, the Bearcats hung up. The Pitts biplane hung up. Um, managed to uh, just clean it up and organize it, man. Um, I was sitting here watching some uh, videos on the Flex Jet because I'm thinking about – I'm pretty sure that's going to probably be the next one that I take out and fly. Yeah, Flex Jet's behind me at 14. Um the camera is actually setting off in the distance now. Um, there's definitely a lot more room. Um, yeah, the hangar, it, it's it, its so much more comfortable now, guys. I mean, it's like, it's night and day. I feel like I can breathe in here now. Um, uh, the way it was set up before, I was like kind of packed into this little space like this. And it was just like, oh my God, I had to do something about it. Um, uh, it kind of had to be done anyways, but, um, I ended up taking out all the stuff, every one of my planes, I cleaned off all the dust, uh, ended up taking out my, uh, cause I keep my shoes in here too. And I ended up taking out all my shoes. I probably have about 15, 20 pairs of shoes. I didn't take all my shoes out. I cleaned all of them up. Craft King, what's going on, man? Um, yeah, guys, I, I'm really sorry that that, um, that that maiden flight on that Stinger wasn't a bit longer. Um, but we were getting our asses beat by those mosquitoes, man. I mean, and you know, they, it, 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 it seemed like they didn't even start their bullshit until I punched full throttle and went to take off. Like, not one mosquito near us. If you watch the video again, if you go back and watch the video, you'll see there isn't one GD mosquito anywhere near us. As soon as I punch that throttle and I start walking to my spot where I usually fly from, um, immediately, immediately you'll start seeing Kyle. The camera's going like this. That's Kyle. He's going whack, 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 trying to whack the, you know, as good as, as bad as those mosquitoes were attacking us, man, he, that's why Kyle's my cameraman, man. Um, nobody, nobody does a better job. Nobody does a better job at the camera than Kyle. Uh, and this is a 13 year old boy, man, 13 year old kid, man. He's been doing this with me from the very beginning. Um, and there's no one on this planet, uh, that I would trust, uh, with, uh, with a video like that. <clears throat> he, uh, he prides himself on doing a good job, man. He does not like uh, negative feedback. So uh, he was very, very worried uh, that people were going to be upset that he was moving around a bit while he was swatting those mosquitoes. Um, I watched the video in the truck and I looked at him and I said, Kyle, man, I said, I'm really impressed, man. I'm, I'm impressed that you held it together, man, <laughs> because I know what they were doing to me. Um, I know what the mosquitoes, I had one go right in my ear right in my ear and i couldn't take my hand off the controller so the only thing i could do was like shake my head really so i shook my head nope that son of a bitch bit me on the inside of my ear so i took my shoulder and that's when i landed right after that right after i got that mosquito in the ear um that was it i was done i was done i was like i'm not no 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 i'm not risking it um what I can say is that the Stinger 90, um, Jeff, you were right, man. That thing, she's a baby doll. Uh, she is an absolute baby. Um, 
can't wait to go back out and fly her again. It was pissing rain all day long today. Uh, just a really crappy day. That's why I took, um, it just, it made for a good day to get in here and clean this room out and organize it a bit. Um, so can't wait to get back out and fly the son of a gun again. Uh, this time I'll be able to, I, I noticed that I'll, I can move that battery back a bit. Um, she was a touch nose heavy. Uh, not that you would notice in the video. I could feel it in the sticks. Um, but I can probably move that battery probably about a quarter of an inch back and that will put it pretty damn close to perfect. Um, I ended up putting some rates in, so I have a, I have a high rate and a medium rate. So pretty much my high and low. Um, and I was flying it on the, the lower rate seemed a little like it seemed like a little a little bit touchy on the ailerons uh and it felt like i needed a tad bit more sensitivity on the elevator so i uh i fixed those things in the radio and uh the next flight should be should be a a, a nice one got the flaps dialed in um i changed my pin positions to uh what you suggested jeff um not bad, man. Not bad at all. You know, you guys, I, I had planned to go to Jet Jams this year. I thought Jet Jams was next month. Um, man, that, that, that one kind of gets, gets to me, man. I wanted, I wanted to go to Jet Jams this year. I honestly, I just got the dates wrong. I, I had, I had it, I had it mixed up in my head, man. Um, so I had, what is it called? Nephi? Is it called Nephi? I had Jet Jam's dates and Nephi's dates mixed up. So that's all, that's all it was. It's not a good mistake to make because I was really, really looking forward to going to Jet, Jet Jam's this year. Um, so I, I believe uh, instead of going to Jet Jam's, uh, it'll, is it Nephi? Is that what it's called, you guys? Is it called Nephi? It is Nephi. I think it is Nephi. <sighs> yeah, so uh, I'm a little upset that I won't be able to make it to Jet Jams. Uh, I was going to do um, a really nice giveaway there, uh, but I'll, I'll save it for um, I'll save it for Nephi. I think that, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, Nephi. Nephi or Nephi. Nephi or Nephi. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I was chatting with Ryan. I get the link you sent me. Are you talking about for the discount planes there, uh, Lee? It is Nephi, right? Okay, Jeff. All right, thank you, buddy. I, I thought I thought so. Um, Ruffins, you're going to Nephi? Uh, in the Stinger video? Let me, let me check, buddy. Um, Um, uh, Lee, no, I didn't. Um, I just got a, um, I just got a comment from you that says sweet. Um, no link though. 
Um, Yeah, those damn mosquitoes were relentless, guys. Relentless. Um, they were on a mission, that's for sure. Um, right at about sundown, that's when those little sons of bitches come out because there's a nice stagnant pond right next to that field. Um, and where we didn't have uh, too much rain uh, during our rainy season this year, um, typically what happens is if we get a lot of rain, it washes the larvae down and it washes it out. Uh, and then we don't have a big, uh, mosquito boom. Um, this year we didn't get the rain. We didn't get adequate enough rain. Uh, the larvae stuck around and yeah, we're dealing with some skeeters up here, man. Yeah. These mosquitoes, man, they don't care if you're, it, it doesn't matter if you're wearing three shirts and a sweatshirt. They'll, they'll dig right through it. They don't care, man. They were getting me through my hat, man. They were actually biting my head through my hat. Yeah, Jeff, that's funny, man. When I was uh, stationed in Alaska um, in the military, uh, the, uh, the joke was the Alaska state bird was actually the, uh, was the mosquito. They actually had a license plate of it, too. It was funny. Uh, Lee, no, I didn't get your, um, I didn't get your link, man. What, what were you trying to, uh, what direction were you trying to point me in? Lemongrass oil. I'm just bringing the AR-15. Yeah, that was a good video, Boozer. Um, well, everything everything's important, bro. I I, I take everything to heart. <clears throat> what was it? What, what was it that you were trying to show me? <clears throat> if you want to hit me up about it later, that's cool too. I mean, um, I always have time for my subscribers, man. No, there there is no such thing as uh, not important enough. Hell yeah, it'll get them. And if I if I miss them with the AR-15 rounds, at least the uh, at least the carbon and the uh, sulfur from the uh, shells that might scare them off a bit. Oh, ha, no. <clears throat> Yeah, man, I was, I was, um, I was, uh, I was a bit upset when I found out that, uh, Jet Jams was this week. I thought for sure I had another couple of weeks. That's too bad, man. I've been looking forward to going to that shit all year. Uh, I can't bitch about skeeters. I remember freezing and all. Yeah, I'll take the mosquitoes. Yep. Yep. Yep, you make a good point, sir. You make a hell of a point. I will, I will take those mosquitoes all day long. If that means we don't have to deal with the winter. Be up at Lewiston tomorrow, Roy. What? Lewiston? You're gonna be. Oh, uh, you must be talking about over there because we have a Lewiston, Maine. So, anyways, I got a message from Paul, Mr. Paul Hatcher. Got two packages from me, Barry G R C. Barry, 
I saw um, Jeff's package, <laughs> the condition his package was in uh, when he received it. And it was about a three inch tear away from everything coming out of that package. Um, yes, sir. Uh, what uh, are they? Um, is he doing? Is he doing a show tonight? Is uh, Pilot Ryan doing a show tonight on Thursday? No. 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 No, he ain't doing that. There ain't nothing up here. There ain't nothing up here. No. No. Um... Horizon Hobby made today with the Havoc. 23 minutes on a 7,000 milliamp bat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So somebody flew the new Havoc for 23 minutes on a 7,000 milliamp battery? No, I I did not. No, Ryan is on the way to Jet Jane. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's what I, no showing. I didn't think so. Um, Barry, um, after seeing Jeff's packages, all uh, right. After seeing Jeff's package, uh, I have to ask, what was the condition of your packages when you received them? He has 11 planes crammed in his car. <laughs> he was on Facebook Live driving. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing, man. He, um, he. So here's the deal: he can actually live stream like via telephone. He can actually live stream straight from his phone. Um, that's what I would do if I was him. Um, I would uh, pop the hotspot and uh, live stream right from the phone. Anything over ten minutes for an EDF is ridiculous i mean there's some prop planes out there that can't even go more than 10 minutes on a 6s 5000 jeff what are you up to man what are you doing what did you say you were doing you're going you're going to go chill in your hangar where you got something you working on something what you working on nothing Oh, you going to bed? Yeah, I'm probably gonna head to bed too, man. I just figured I'd uh, I'd jump on and show you guys what I've done with the place. Um, yeah. So if I move the camera over here, oh, you will see that I was able to. I was able to hold on. Let me do this. There we go. I was able to get the saber hung up along with the sky sword back there and um the bigger planes i have down oh let me shut, let me shut that um i was able to get my big biplane in here i have the other biplane hung up there the bear cat right there um my german i put my german planes together got my falco wolf and the 262 over there together um that little vampire, which was a load of fun. That thing was fun as hell. A big FMS P-47 back there. Um, and then just so the, – the, the, the main thing is just the amount of room uh, that uh, I achieved by, uh, by doing this. Um, I have a ridiculous amount of room now, man. I can actually – I can breathe in here, man. Um, no, I haven't flown that P-51, man. I, 
I have a fuel tank. I got this beautiful Valley View RC fuel tank that's going to be getting put in that P51. Um, right, as of right now, I have the stock um, fuel tank inside of the P51, and um, there's an air leak. There's a gross air leak somewhere, and um, it's not allowing fuel to get into the carburetor. So I'm going to put the new fuel tank in. And that should take care of that problem. I'm going to run some bigger hose, a wider diameter hose. Um, and then I'm going to squirt some fuel straight into the carburetor. And I'm getting spark. I took the spark plugs out, connected them, and uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely getting spark. Um, so basically, it's just a matter of getting fuel from the fuel tank up to the motor. Um, yeah, but yeah, the P51, it's been ready. It's ready to go. Um, I have that hooked up through my Tyrannus. It's on a redundant system. I got two receivers in there. Um, if so, and two, two, bat two batteries, two switches, two switches, two batteries, and, uh, two receivers. Uh, the reason I did that was in case, uh, one of the batteries or receivers fail, I'll still be able to control half the plane. So basically I'll still have one elevator half working and one aileron, aileron working. So basically it's a redundant system. Um, I don't know why I did it that way. I just said, well, if I can use, if I can use 16 channels, I might as well use 16 channels. Let me figure out a way of using 16 channels and make it make sense and make it feasible. And I was like, well, shit, man, if I, if I do it this way, if one of these, uh, uh, lifey batteries decides not to work or one of the receivers shuts down, I'll still have one receiver working. I'll still be able to control an aileron and an elevator. So, <clears throat> Uh, the F-14, uh, the F-14 is actually good to go, man. I could fly that F-14 anytime. Um, I've only flown the F-14 once and, um, it was at the, uh, AMA flying field that we have here up to sky streakers. Um, the minute I took off, I kind of circled back to the left. They actually want you to take off. If you're, if you're taking off right to left, uh, they want you to take off and go right. Well, I have a tremendously horrible habit of wanting to take off and bank left. I always want to get into a left-hand circuit as fast as I possibly can. I feel more comfortable going to the left. I can turn right. I can go right. I just feel more comfortable in a left-hand bank. Um, the plane got a little close to the line, and somebody started screaming in the back saying, keep it over the field, rah, rah, rah. Um, I immediately got pissed off at whatever douchebag it was that started yelling at me behind my back while I had almost a thousand dollar plane screaming through the air. Um, so I did two circles, uh, and, and set up for an approach for a landing. So it wasn't much of a flight at all. Um, as soon as I landed the plane, I looked back and I was like, um, who said that? I was very, very, very curious to find out who it was that was running their fucking mouth. And I was like, who said that? Because I wasn't dangerously close to the line. I mean, I was near the line, but I wasn't dangerously close to the line. I had, I had room, I had room to play with. And, uh, he wouldn't speak up. So, uh, he wouldn't speak up and, and, and say who it was. So I said, okay, well, whoever it was, you know, while the plane's in the air, you know, keep your comments to yourself. When I land the plane, if you have some corrective criticism or 
constructive criticism you want to throw my way, by all means, come over here and lay it on me. Don't be yelling behind my back when I got my plane in the air, though, man. That's just the most rude, ignorant shit that you could possibly do to someone. Um, and that was the first and last time I flew the F-14. So um, it flies great. It's got a uh, it's got a free wing gyro in it. Um, it's set up so that when I sweep the wings, the ailerons don't work. You know, it's uh, it's set up like what is his name there? The RC. It's set up just like the RC geeks. Um, exactly like the RC geeks, except I don't have full full span flaps, and that's because I'm only working with an eight channel receiver, and. Um, I decided to use the other channel to split the aileron so that I could shut them off while the wings are uh, closed. Yeah, Ian, you know, what pissed me off the most about it, Jeff, was the fact that I turned around. I I knew who it was. I knew exactly who it was that was, that yelled it out. Um, I just wanted to see if he was going to man up and say, yeah, it was me. Um, unfortunately... Uh, that's not what happened. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do, say if me and me, see if me and Mary Boozer and Jeff, we're all at the flying, we're at the flying field. And right as Boozer is about ready to take off, or right after he takes off, we got some asshole, AKA Dave or Jeff behind him. Start screaming. That's not cool, man. That's not cool. Because if I was Boozer, I would have turned. I would have landed that plane. I would have turned around, and I would have told that guy where to go. I would have told him how to get there too. We'll map out and everything. Um. Anyways, uh, long story short, I got the plane back down in one piece. Uh, I was a little pissed off and aggravated. Um, that somebody was yelling behind my back while I was trying to fly a maiden flight on a plane that's at that time for me was terrifying, terrifying. Um, yeah, that was a really uh, uh, impulse buy that F-14. I probably shouldn't have bought that plane until somewhere around now. And uh, I was pretty, I was pretty proud of myself, man. I got it up and I got it down. That's, that was, I overshot the runway a little bit on the landing. Uh, but she just kind of rolled off the end of the runway and I was able to turn her around and bring her back up. Um, you know, the guys at the flying field are probably going to hate me for saying this, but I mean, I just get more satisfaction out of going to my little field that I fly at by myself nobody you know for the most part unless you're my friend i don't really want your company um when i go to the flying field i'd rather be alone uh unless I, unless it's a friend um you know there is there's a couple of guys at the flying field that you know i do enjoy being around eddie he's one of them um, and I can't think of his name right now, but, uh, he has a, oh my God, what is his name? Anyways, there's, a, there's a couple of them that I like hanging around with there. Uh, there's a young kid that's usually there flying around with his dad. Uh, those two guys, they're, they're pretty cool. Um. Eddie, he's the flying instructor there, and I've always liked Eddie from day one. Eddie's just Eddie's just a uh, he's a very knowledgeable guy. He's a really good pilot, and um, he's into the he's into these EDF jets like I am. So uh, he had he just got the Avani last year before before uh, before they closed down for the year. Um, I'm still trying to get up there so me and Eddie can have that Avani flight together. Um, but there's nothing better than taking Kyle, grabbing a couple planes, um, and just going to my field. Now, 
is it an AMA sanctioned field? No, but I do have special permission from the town um, and the people in the neighborhood um, to do what I do there. That doesn't mean that if I crash that bitch into a pl or a house, if I crash one of my planes into a house or something, um, I'm not covered by AMA because it's not an AMA sanctioned field. I would like to one day propose it to the town to see if I could get it sanctioned, AMA sanctioned. Um, we're not in a flight line there. It's just a field out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I don't know what I would have to do to go about getting the field sanctioned. Um, and don't get me wrong. There are a few people at the fly at the AMA field that I enjoy hanging around that I, that, you know, there are some cool people that go there. Um, but there's also some douchebags guys. And I mean, douchebags on a chronic level, like there's just, you know, there's being an ass and then there's being an asshole. And some of these guys are just assholes, man. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, my grandpa always used to say, if you ain't got something nice to say, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Just like that. Uh, grandma said it a little bit nicer than that. But grandpa, he was, he's a pretty blunt guy. You ain't got something nice to say, shut your GD mouth. Nobody wants to hear it. I don't care if your planes are better than mine. I don't care if you're a better pilot than me. It's not why I'm here. I'm here to have fun for myself, for my kid, and then we're gonna leave. I'm I, I'm not I'm not trying to uh, I'm not trying to be your friend. I'm not gonna go get a beer or have a beer with you. Um, I'm not gonna hold your hand. I'm not looking for friends. I don't need friends. Uh, I got plenty of friends in my RC community, the only friends that I need, really. Um, the last thing I need is to go to a place where I want to enjoy myself and fly my planes around. And instead of enjoying myself and flying my planes around, I'm flying my planes around and I'm looking over my shoulder every five minutes because I have this feeling that somebody's running their goddamn mouth about me. Or they're saying something obnoxious. Are they, you know, I, you know, I'm a pretty fast learner. And what I learned was if I'm going to go to the AMA field, show up late. Get there about an hour and a half, two hours before sundown. Because everybody's gone by then. Usually the only person that's there is, uh, oh, Eric. Sorry, that's his name, Eric. Um, Eric and Eddie are usually the only ones there by that time. Um, and then we have Doug, the helicopter guy, those three guys. Um, and then there's also Dave, the one that I actually bought this beast plane off of. Um, so there are some good ones, guys. There, there, there are some good ones, but, um, uh, for the most part, you guys, I just enjoy going out and I don't like an audience when I fly anyway. I don't, that's why I did the YouTube channel. People want to see me fly, catch it on YouTube. <laughs> when people, I actually get nervous when people stop in their cars and start watching me uh, from the street in their cars. I'll, I'll sit there and wait a second to see if they leave. <laughs> Boozer, take it easy, man. Um, I don't, I didn't, I didn't get into this hobby for, uh, to please other people. I got, I got into this hobby, uh, because it helped, it really helps with my post-traumatic stress. It, it really helps with, uh, keeping my mind occupied. Like today I spent the whole day, uh, pulling these planes out, cleaning them off, rearranging this room so that I have more room in here. Um, kept my mind occupied. Um, It's peace and tranquility when I go to my flying field. When I go to the AMA field, it's, man, 
I might, I'm going to have to look, I, I feel like I have to look over my shoulder. I have to, I feel like, I feel like I'm on edge there. I feel like, I feel like people are staring at me. I feel, I don't know. I don't know. It could just be my PTSD too. Um, and the fact that I have horrible trust issues. I, I do not trust people. I trust, I, I have a horrible time trusting people. So uh, it doesn't take much to scare me away. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jeff, love you, boy. We'll see you later, man. Have a good night, man. Um, I'm gonna be cutting this down anyway uh, here pretty soon. I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to touch base with you guys and show you guys what I've been working on all day. Um, by all means, if you have an RC uh, AMA RC flying field that you can go to, and you know you uh, you don't have to deal with so much of the uh, the uh, monotonous shit. By all means, man, go to that AMA field, man. Tear it up. Boozer, you you have a nice little AMA field that you go to. I'm, I'm, I like that uh, AMA field that you go to. Um, but uh, don't let me discourage you from going to an AMA field uh, because that's, that's what you should be doing. You should be flying at an AMA field. Uh, therefore, if you get in any kind of trouble with your plane or you crash it into something, uh, you're covered uh, with your AMA, uh, insurance. Um, I started flying and then two years later I discovered the AMA field. So I was, I already had, I already had a way of, of doing things. I already had my way of, uh, of how I like to fly. And the way I like to fly is to be out there by my goddamn self. I don't have to listen to nobody's opinion. I don't have to listen to nobody's criticism except for my own and Kyle's. If I have a question, this is the, this is the cool thing though. If I have a question, um, when I went to go made in the Avani for the first time, I was really having a hard time figuring out where that battery placement was. Where the hell do I put this battery? Um, it just so happened that I, I started FaceTiming uh, Eddie. Eddie's the uh, flying instructor. He's the one I was just telling you guys about. And uh, sure enough, Eddie pops up on the screen. I was like, Eddie, man. So I'm about ready to made in this Avani. Where do I put the battery? And he pretty much described out where I put it. I put the battery in that spot. Um, got off the phone with Eddie uh, from FaceTiming Eddie. Uh Spooled her up, let her rip, and boy, was she she was right on. He was he was spot on with the uh, with the battery placement. Um, so I don't technically have to go to the flying field in order to benefit from Eddie's experience and uh, expertise. Um, I got him on speed dial. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, there are going to be a few events coming up here at our AMA club and I will be there filming for those events. We have an electric fun fly coming up, which is always a blast. That was a blast last year when I went, um, I brought that big FMS P47. I brought the, oh, my first saber that I had before that lost it in the woods, uh, I got the second one back here now. Uh, this year's electric uh, fun fly. I think I'm going to take this F-22, the flex jet, the stinger, definitely. Um, and then probably the, um, uh, the Corsair, the big Corsair, the flight line Corsair behind me, which tomorrow on tomorrow's show, you guys, I'll have that big ass Corsair sitting up here on the table. And um, we're going to be putting the freaking decals on it because I have yet to put the decals on that plane. So we'll have it up here on the table. Uh, if you guys want to see anything about it, you want to look inside of it, you want me to open it up, look in anything you guys want to look at, I'm going to be binding a receiver to it. Um, 
getting it all figured out, putting some rates in, putting some expo in, and uh, most of all, just getting those decals put on it. But um, yeah, guys, um, it's Thursday night. You know, you mofos have to get up and go to work tomorrow. What the hell are you guys doing in here with me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Eddie, if you watch this, you know I love you like a brother, man. And uh, I can't say that for too many of the people up there, but uh, you uh, you definitely are. Um, you're definitely one of the ones that uh, I do give a shit when it comes to you and uh, and Eric, Dave. Uh, and I can't remember, I, I can't remember what his name is, man, but he flies the P-51s there. Um, I also like that, I, you know, there, like I said, there are a handful of guys up there at the field that I do like. Um, I enjoy their company. Um, but then there's just some schmucks. Like, their purpose in life when they wake up in the morning is to see how many people they can piss off before day's end. Um, and that typically goes okay for them until they run into me. And then they wish they would, they, they would have stayed home. Cause I, I don't fly that way. I don't, I don't put up with that shit, man. I don't put up with that shit. You want to talk, you want to talk to me? you got something to say to me, say it to my face. First off, don't none of that bullshit talking behind my back shit. If it's important enough to say behind my back it's it's damn well important enough to come over here and say it to my face. And if you can't come over here and say it to my face, well, your balls haven't dropped yet, son. Take that shit. Take that shit up the highway. I'm here to have a good time. Not, not to worry about what you have to say about me behind my back. Funny enough, none of these guys even know me personally, so... Anything that they would have to say behind my back, it would probably just be them snickering about the fact that I'm not a very good pilot. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not. I'm not. I'm not a very good pilot. I'm an okay pilot. I'm definitely not on the on the on the level of Ryan. Um, you know, I mean, even Skip Skip built RC man. He's actually surpassed me as of late. He's gotten a lot better. Um, I do what I do, man. I get the plane up and I get it back down. And that's all that freaking matters to me. If I can bring my plane home in one piece, that's a good day for me. That's a good day for me. If my, my plane doesn't get lost in the woods and get confiscated by a hunter that rips it into a million pieces and throws it in the trash, that's a good day for me. So uh, I don't nitpick. And I sure as hell don't criticize people's flying abilities um ever ever never have never will if you're a shitty pilot i'm still going to tell you you did a good job if you crash that plane into the ground on the landing i'm going to say man that was a good effort you'll never ever get any negativity out of me period just i'm just not a negative person I believe in building self-esteem, not not crushing it. Um, Forty-three minutes. What the hell, Roy? You're supposed to tell me when we get this far along, man. You guys got work tomorrow. What the hell are you guys doing? Go to bed. Go to bed. Uh, Barry, while I have you here, did your packages show up okay? Were they? beat the shit torn to shreds or did they actually show up in uh in fairly decent condition the babbling battle that's right live to fly another day man no bullshit man Roy, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, is Roy throwing it in my face that he has sunny weather over there? He is, isn't he? Son of a bitch. 
Hey, well, guess what, Roy? It's going to be sunny here tomorrow, too. <clears throat> Barry? Maybe he, I don't, maybe he didn't hear me. Barry, did your packages show up in fairly good condition? All right, Lee, I got you, man. Craft King, are you in Southern California? I actually grew up in Southern California. That's why I'm asking. Oh, you're in Northern California. Okay. Ninety-five, Jesus. A video of my outside. Loop. Oh, okay. All right. I'll make sure I check that. I think Barry checked out. Um, I was really, um, I was really, really, really wanting to know if his packages showed up in in fairly in good condition because I saw the way Jeff's package showed up to him, and uh, like I said, it was about a three-inch tear away from everything falling out of that wrapping paper. I think I'm going to have to double wrap uh, things for now on. Yeah, okay, so Barry's out. I got to go. Yeah, guys, hey, man, um, I appreciate you guys coming in here and uh, chilling with me. Okay, Brian, thanks, man. I appreciate that. So, yeah, they did show up. Okay, then. Um yeah, guys, uh, thanks for coming and chilling with me for a little bit. Um, I'll see you guys at Toe the Line tomorrow night. Be there or be square, mofos. Um, Lee, I'll check that video out after I uh, shut down the stream here. Um, yeah, guys, Ruffins, Wreck'em Roy's, Eric Rogers, Shadow Ops RC, The Craft King. Love RC. Still working on that 262 for you, buddy. I'm not going to be sending it out towards until the, towards the uh, the first of the month, anyhow. So uh, gives me a little bit more time to mess with it. Jeff's already out of here. Brian Chambers, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me for a little bit, Mister Weaven. How could I forget, man? Come on, man. I can't forget you and the Craft King. Come on, the Craft King. Um, yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and finish up in here and then I'm going to go to bed, man. You guys have a great night. Oh yeah. Trick Mustang, 1994. Peace out, homie. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Toe the line. 9 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it, guys. I'm out of here, guys. Dave, Dave's RC. Jindo.